This video was sponsored by Hover. What does the world's largest phone maker do when it can no longer effectively sell phones? That's the question Huawei had to ask itself about a year ago. In 2020, the company briefly overtook Samsung and Apple to take the number one spot for a single quarter, and then, less than a year later, it fell out of the global top five with its market share plunging to just 4% and its massive footprint disappearing around the world. Huawei was first hurt in international markets by losing access to the Play Store and other Google services, but the really devastating blow came when the company started running out of the high-end processors it had had stockpiled earlier, which meant that even in China, where the Google ban did not affect them, they eventually got overtaken by local rivals like Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi. With no option to buy high-end chips for the last year or so due to US sanctions, and no domestic alternatives on the horizon for the next few years at least, many of the company's devices now have to be pre-ordered in strange limited quantity drops. Offline Huawei experience stores often have no actual inventory to sell. The company's main P-series flagship phones, which usually come out around eight April have been delayed by many months this year, and the giant even had to spin out its Honor sub-brand completely to save at least that part of the business from the sanctions. Huawei is simply slowly running out of chips, and by extension, it's running out of phones it can sell too. So, what does a phone company do that doesn't have any phones to sell? Well, apparently it takes its almost 200,000 employees and goes through one of the most mind-boggling transformations I've ever seen in corporate history, turning itself from a hardware company to a software company. And in the 77th episode of the Story Behind series, let's take a look at that transition. To explain Huawei's new direction, we must first understand the company's most important new project, Harmony OS. Unfortunately, because Huawei keeps calling many different things Harmony OS, it's a little hard to define what it actually is, but lucky for you, I've just talked to a Huawei product manager, I went to a Huawei experience store, I've read the Huawei developer documentation, and I've even tried and failed to build a Harmony OS app myself. So let me explain where the project is right now and where I think it is going in the future. So Huawei first announced Harmony OS in 2019, when the Google ban was dropped on them. And the company initially presented it as an entirely new operating system built in-house by Huawei that would come with its own microkernel and would fully replace Android on phones and other devices. Then a few months later, they said that it was actually totally not made for phones, and then this year, they finally released some sort of a hybrid. I mean, a system like the one Huawei originally described technically does exist, and I've heard Huawei refer to it as either Open Harmony or Embedded Harmony at the times, which you can think of as sort of Harmony OS in its purest form. But Huawei themselves have confirmed to me that this did not in fact replace the systems running on Huawei's phones or tablets or watches or whatever. Instead, Open Harmony for now is designed to run primarily on third-party devices like the Midea smart oven that they used to demo in their keynote, or smart fridges, or whatever. Open Harmony is an intriguing but relatively simple system so far, and it is an actual open source project that any device maker can contribute to or run on their devices as they see fit. Now, Huawei's own devices, like their phones, tablets, and watches, don't actually run Open Harmony. Instead, they continue to run a version of whatever OS they did before, so an Android fork or Lite OS, for example, but they now have bits and pieces of Open Harmony basically attached to them. For example, on phones, Huawei tells me that they actually bundled the Harmony OS microkernel next to the main operating system, and there it is responsible for handling a few things, like user authentication and managing your biometric data, separate from the rest of the system, and to all of their devices, Huawei also attached the Harmony OS app platform and connectivity layer. This means that apps built specifically for Harmony OS can run on Open Harmony, on Android-based Huawei phones, on Lite OS-based Huawei smartwatches, on whatever OS-based Huawei TVs, in-car infotainment systems, and whatever, and they can very seamlessly pair and share data between each other as well. And this shared layer is actually why Huawei thinks it makes sense to call all of their various systems running on all of their various devices a single operating system. Now, I and many other people on the internet strongly disagree with this being an operating system, but I also want to spare you a 10-minute philosophical rant about what an operating system is and isn't, so let's just agree that this is, in fact, a platform of sorts, and let's move on to the very fascinating 
characteristics and implications for the future. Harmony OS and its app platform are built from the ground up to make multi-device collaboration very smooth and easy for both users and developers. And Harmony OS apps have three really interesting capabilities that enable better connections. First, apps are modular, and that allows them to load different components based on what device they're running on. So an app on a phone could run in full and could give you a complex UI and whatever, while that same app could also run on a watch or on a TV where it would maybe only load parts of the apps, like an overview screen, for example, making it much easier for developers to just write an app once and run it almost everywhere. Second, when multiple devices are connected into what the company calls a super device, the app can split itself up and run different modules on different devices at once wirelessly. So a game running on your phone could cast its visuals to your TV, but could keep the controls running on the phone, for example, with the Harmony OS connectivity stack keeping the two in sync. Now, an Android app developer could theoretically replicate many of these capabilities themselves as well, like Google has done with Cast, for example, but with Harmony OS, most of these cross-device capabilities, they're built right into the app platform. So basically, theoretically, any third-party developer could take advantage of them by just declaring the modules of their apps properly, and the OS would take care of the rest. And third, Huawei also has something called Atomic Services. These are little HTML-based mini-apps that the user doesn't have to install. They just load basically instantly like a website would. And Huawei has primarily showed these as companions to smart devices like the aforementioned smart ovens, for example. So the user wouldn't have to install their companion app, but could just tap an NFC and get basic functionality right away. So these three things, plus a robust new connectivity stack, is what Huawei thinks will make Harmony OS apps so much better that users and developers might want to switch over to them away from Android apps, basically. Especially in China, where users apparently have like 50 different smart devices and might want to take advantage of all of these cross-device capabilities. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to be enough. I mean, there are apparently only a few hundred Harmony apps in the wild so far, with almost none outside of China yet. Plus, building a new app ecosystem is extremely hard. Just ask anybody who's ever tried. And while Huawei apparently still has about a billion ish active devices in circulation, remember that they basically can't sell any new ones at scale, for the next few years at least, so that pool will basically also start disappearing in the next few years. Those are a really difficult odds, and if there's one thing that developers don't like to build brand new apps for, it's basically platforms that are rapidly shrinking. Which actually brings us back to the original question of this video. Why is Huawei trying so hard to build a new operating system, or I think more correctly, a new platform, when it can't appear to sell phones anymore and will essentially run out of phones and other devices to run that platform on? And to answer that question, we will have to read between the lines. See, surely Huawei wants Harmony OS to run on hundreds of millions of their own devices at first, but they never said that they'd want to stop there. In fact, both versions of Harmony OS, so the pure open Harmony and the weird hybrid that we have running on Huawei phones, for example, are very much built so that they can run on third-party devices too. Open Harmony already runs mostly on third-party devices, and if Harmony OS on phones and watches and such is just something Huawei added on to other operating systems like Android, then surely Oppo, Xiaomi, or Vivo, or other phone brands could add it to their devices too if they want it. There are rumors that those companies are at least testing just that, and Huawei has openly said that they want to support more base operating systems in the future too, so maybe the smartwatches and fitness bands and TVs and all of the other devices that these companies have could soon support Harmony OS as well. Almost all Chinese filmmakers like Xiaomi, Oppo, and Realme, and so on, have started building huge portfolios of smart connected devices, where most of the devices that they're selling aren't even made by them, but by random third-party contract manufacturers. These companies are all facing a hugely complex connectivity problem, and sure, they could each build their entire connectivity stack to solve it themselves, but if a freely available, super robust platform and app ecosystem existed that they could just add to their device, much like they just add Android to their phones, they might just be inclined to use that instead. 
I am somewhat speculating, of course, but I think this is the real master plan for Harmony OS, to turn it into the default connectivity and app platform for many manufacturers, not just Huawei, at least in China, and I think there are at least three reasons why this could theoretically work. First, remember that Google isn't present in China, so the phone ecosystem there is super fragmented with every phone maker having to create their own app store, their own bundled apps, services, etc. This means many things such as Google Home or Google Cast or the upcoming Matter Smart Device Alliance that we use outside of China to manage our devices just aren't present there. Instead, each device maker has its own somewhat walled garden and interoperability can be an actual headache for both users and developers. This fragmentation has already given rise to many cross-company platforms such as WeChat mini apps for example and might give rise to a cross-company and cross-device platform from like Harmony OS as well. Second, while most other Chinese device makers weren't hit as hard by the US sanctions as Huawei was, they have all seen the devastation it has caused to the company and are very much looking to strengthen domestic platforms where possible so they can avoid the same happening to them as well. And third, now that Huawei can't really sell phones at scale anymore, Xiaomi, Oppo and the others can stop seeing them as purely a competitor that they have to defeat at all costs and can instead start seeing them as a partner that they can actually work with. Now, to be clear, this is going to be a massive uphill battle and Huawei is not at all guaranteed to succeed. But China is an extremely unique market and I think Huawei, because of all of their troubles, have actually found a really interesting opportunity in it. The company itself has already said that it wants to pivot to primarily becoming a software maker, at least for now, and if they manage to get device makers and developers across the industry to hop onto the Harmony OS platform, they could maybe turn it into a third major ecosystem besides Apple's iOS and Mac ecosystem and Google's Android and Chrome extended universe. Now, if you are like Huawei and you'll ever want to build something cool yourself, you'll first need a domain name for it. Like how about maybe badass.technology? That one is available for just 22 bucks a year on Hover right now. And even if you don't need a website, you can just use it as an email address. Like joe at badass.technology has a pretty impressive ring to it in my opinion. And Hover has over 400 fun extensions that you can choose from like maybe .tube for a YouTuber or .beer or .restaurant or .golf. There are just so many good options. For award-winning customer support and 10% off your new domain, visit hover.com slash techaltar and find your new online identity.